good morning and a warm welcome to all of you, each one of you, joining us for this service on this 10th Sunday after Pentecost. The day is August 9th, 10 a.m., but this service was taped on Thursday, July 23rd. And that is um, in order to provide a way for uh, there to be a vacation for our worship leaders and our worship helpers. Our organist, Scott Presky, has not had a vacation for over two years. And it's very difficult, even especially in these times, to find a substitute organist. But also, um, Ed, Stout, our acolyte, uh, Rob Freeman, our cantor and puppeteer who does the children's chat, they get to have a vacation also, as well as the wonderful ladies of our altar guild, Doris Shermer and Jean Skosipic. So uh, we will be returning to live streaming. We are still going to be doing live streaming, but Again, this service this morning uh, was taped on the 23rd of July. We invite all of our children uh, to be part of the children's chat, to be blessed by it following the opening hymn. At our prayer table this morning, we again remember and offer prayer for everyone affected by COVID-19. Let us pray. Gracious God of mercy, compassion, and wholeness, be healing for the sick, comfort for the grieving, sustainer for the caregivers, wisdom for the leaders, peace for the fearful, companion for the lonely, guide for the confused, and strength for us all. Through Christ, the Savior, and our Deliverer, Amen. And with the second candle, we invite your prayers.
I'm listening for God to talk to me and I'm not hearing anything. Are you there? <laughs> Mr. Rob? Is God there? Well, I don't know. Why don't you ask our friend, Mr. Sloth? <laughs> and here he comes along. Hi, Romper. <laughs> How are you? A little faster, please. <laughs> oh, you're slow. Well, I've been li listening for God, and I'm not hearing him lately. Well, what are you doing? Well, I'm busy, but I'm still listening. Are you quiet? No, no, <laughs> quiet. Me, quiet, no. I like to listen to my music in the morning when I go for my run. And your swim? And my swim too, yes. <laughs> I keep very physically fit. And I love my music, and I like to watch TV, and uh, I like lots going on. Well, proper. How do you expect to hear God when there's so much noise in your world? What? Noise? God can talk through the noise? Well, proper. Mr. Rob's going to read a little bit of the lesson, and maybe you'll understand. Okay, I will read a little bit. I think this is what you want me to read, that now there was a great wind so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks and pieces before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. Not in the wind? I would have thought God would be in the wind. Yeah. Listen, Robert. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. I would have thought God could really be speaking through an earthquake. Nope, nope. And after the earthquake, there was a fire. Well, you see, Pentecost, there's fire. God spoke through Pentecost. Nope. The Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, there was silence. You see, Romper, if you're still and quiet and listening, you may hear God. Maybe you'll find out if he still wants you to be a priest. Or maybe there is another calling. You will find out. It's very hard for Little Romper to be quiet, but uh, I'm going to give it a try this week, and I will do my best. No promises. Okay. Bye, everybody. We'll all try to be a little quiet and listen to God this week and see what God has for us. Bye-bye, and we love you all. Thank you. What a great lesson. But so many times God speaks in the silence as we meditate and pray silently. We hear the voice of God. Thank you. Bless be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and bless be God's, God's kingdom, kingdom now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. 
cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Reading from the first book of Kings. On Mount Ho Hoab, where God had appeared to Moses, God gives Elijah, who is the pressed move, a new mission and the promise that there is a remnant in Israel faithful to God. God instructed Elijah to anoint two men as kings and to anoint Elisha as the own successor. Elijah comes to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. 
Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous to the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with a sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. The Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hassel as king of Aram. Also you shall anoint Heshu, son of Nimeshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel Melhoa, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hassel, Jehu shall kill, and whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. The word of the Lord. Thank you to God. Jesus Christ. 
Christian proclamation, therefore, is an indispensable component of God's saving action. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to break Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is a ghost. 
and they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, you, Lord Christ. But after 
suffering with COVID-19 in April, she felt God was calling her, calling her back to worship and to a stronger relationship with the Lord. I salute her. This lady, I believe, has a lot of company. For often it is in the most challenging moments of our lives when we are tossed and when we are battered by life's storms, whatever they might be, that we, we sense our need for God and we hear God calling us to a closer relationship. There's just something about significant trials and turmoils like this lady hit by COVID-19 when we discover a new or perhaps for the first time in our life our need for God and a relationship with God and our dependence on God. I think that's part of what's going on in today's gospel story. After feeding the 5,000 who were following Jesus, eager for his teachings, and many desiring healing by his hand, Jesus commands his disciples to head across the sea without him so that he might bid the crowds farewell and see them on their way. And then he goes up the mountain taking time for renewing communion with God his Father in a night of meditation and prayer. But while the disciples are crossing the sea, a terrible wind and storm arise which threaten to engulf their boat and them. They spend the better part of that fearful and anxious night navigating the giant waves. And then seeing a figure coming toward them in the pre-dawn darkness, they are certain it is a ghost. Who else could be walking on water? But it's Jesus, and he reassures them that it is he drawing near. Jesus' encouragement works, and then some, because Peter is suddenly emboldened to ask if he might join Jesus out on the water despite the wind and the storm. So Peter, I, you've got to give him credit, steps out of the boat and starts walking to Jesus. But suddenly, Peter realizes, OMG, I'm walking on water. And again, aware and fearful of the threatening waves, Peter begins sinking. But Jesus reaches out and grabs him. And what I find of major significance is that at this precise moment, the disciples Peter included, see Jesus for the first time for who he truly is as they confess, truly you, you are the Son of God. This is the very first time in the Gospel of Matthew that Jesus is declared the Son of God by the disciples 
and worship as such. Which is interesting when you think about it. Jesus has just fed thousands upon thousands of helpless and hungry and vulnerable people with merely five loaves of bread, five and two small fish, with baskets overflowing with the leftovers, showing clearly his divine power and his divine compassion. And yet, it's here on the sea at this moment of storm and disruption and calamity and fear when the disciples, including Peter, perceive clearly who Jesus is. And therefore, their need for him. And I have the belief that the disciples are not alone in their reaction. Confessing for myself, there have been times in the peaceful, prosperous, and pleasant portions of my life when I wasn't as close to God and not as aware of my, of my total dependence on God. But then I have fled to God when my life took a dark and, and a very difficult turn. When, like Peter, I have called out and, and I have cried out, Lord, Lord, save me. Lord, save me. We spent a large chunk of time and energy trying to establish a stable, safe, secure, and serene life, both for ourselves and for those we love. And there's nothing wrong with that. But, but too often in our striving, amid the distractions of life, as we try so earnestly to be the master of our life, as we try to be independent, we gradually begin to think we no longer need God, and we slowly lose sight of how much a part of our lives God needs to be and wants to be. such times we might start to forget how much we depend on God. That is until the tragedy strikes in the form of stroke, cancer, the need for bypass surgery, the scourge of COVID-19, the anxiety of parents and teachers about school reopening, the doldrums of staying in place, the job loss, some grave mistake we've made, a, a marital infidelity, the unexpected end of a relationship. And suddenly, our ongoing and our unending and our total need for God becomes crystal clear. But this gospel story about storms does far more than tell us about ourselves. It also tells us so very much about God and God's Son, Jesus. That no matter what it is that makes us aware of our need for God, God still responds faithfully and with love. Just as Jesus reassures the disciples, just as he reaches out and grabs, takes hold of Peter, making certain Peter doesn't sing, so also with us. Amid our challenges and our crises, 
in our uncertainties and, and our fears, Jesus is there for us, reaching out to be with us with compassion, with peace, such as the world never gives and the world cannot give, and with support. And when we falter or even fail, Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, grabs us, embraces us, catches us, and, and sets us straight again, strengthening us to give life another go. There are times in life for each of us when we feel overwhelmed, when life's Waves come crashing down upon us when, when we know we're sinking, when we feel like we're drowning under the multitude of problems. At such times, I pray, I pray, you will hear Jesus speaking the same words he spoke to the disciples that stormy night. Don't lose heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. And I pray also you will experience the hand of Jesus lifting you from the turbulence. Jesus getting into the boat with you. And Jesus calming the storm for you. Bold, impetuous, confident Peter has a great lesson to teach us. A lesson he first learns he tried walking on water. And that is, we are not God. He was no match for life's storms. He needed more. He needed Jesus. That, I believe, is what I heard from that lady whose email to me began this sermon, discovering anew her need for God, realizing anew her need to connect with God through worship, and getting into a better relationship with the Lord. Kudos to her. Amid this pandemic, or amid whatever, whatever the storm battering us might be, may we cry out with Peter, Lord, save me. He will. Jesus will. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand and join me in the affirmation of our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, God, light from light, true God, God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and then was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, and in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. We glory in God's name through the offering of our prayers and petitions, for the will to discover God's word dwelling in our hearts, finding expression through our lips, and revealing hope through our generosity. Let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. For a renewed commitment to the righteousness and peace, that we may join the leaders of the nations in seeking ways to promote harmony, warring lands, and mutual respect across culture, races, and languages. Let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. For creative ways to express the faith, drawing upon the jewels of our tradition, and using our hearts and minds to proclaim Christ's message to those of little faith, or who have no faith at all, let us pray. Hear us, Hear us from the good Lord. That the summer months may provide opportunity for rest and refreshment, so that we may be rejuvenated for the challenges ahead. Let us pray. Hear, Hear us, us good Lord. For medical personnel who volunteer their services in foreign lands and amongst the most needy of the world, that we may lift our voices in praise for the good news they bring to others. Let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. For those who have died and reside in the tomb of death, that Christ, who broke the chains of death, will bring them eternal life, let us pray. Hear us, good Lord. Ever increasing in faith, we continue our prayers. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, especially remembering those on our parish prayer list and those we name in our hearts. Parish members for physical healing and wholeness. Jane, Jenny, Rose, Susan, Jerry, John, Douglas, Mary, Carl, Roland, Ray, Joe, and Betty. For family members and friends, Cheryl, Steve, Bob, Doris, Kendall, Jean-Paul, Lauren, Jennifer, Gregory, Michael, Stephen, Millie, Bill, Andrew, Joan, Amelia, Kathy, Mark and his wife Adrian, and Josephine. Carol, Mary, Mike, Ruth, Eric, Luis, Helen, Peggy, and Robin. Spiritual comfort, peace, and hope for Kay William family and all who saw her at the passing of Kay's sister, Mary. Cycle of prayer for the Episcopal Church in Delaware, the Episcopal Church in Delaware, the Right Reverend Kevin S. Brown Bishop, the Right the Reverend Canon Martha Kirkpatrick, Canon to the Ordinary, and the Mission Support Team. For protection, strength, and peace. Healing for the sick, 
comfort and hope for those who mourn, and strength and skill, focus and effectiveness for the heroic medical teams around the world combating the coronavirus pandemic and seeking a vaccine. For our commitment to racial justice for every citizen, all those who go in harm's way on our behalf, you may offer your special prayers at this time. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. The Savior, Son of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace. God's peace, God's peace, God's peace. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. We are ever grateful, week after week, for the faithfulness of your charity and generosity in sending in your offerings in support of not only the worship, but the ministries of our parish. Just today at noontime, Sandwich Thursdays, one of our ministries during the summer, in this case to the children of Milton went on as it does every week throughout the summer, providing lunch for the children of Milton. So thank you for supporting this and other ministries that continue even amid the pandemic.
It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of this true promise, the Holy Spirit came down from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
now gathered at your table, O God of all creation. And remembering Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ, given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with blessed Saint John the Baptist and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us sing the peace of peace. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your presence that as we lament our separation from one another during this time of disease, we may continually show forth your, your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.